a glorious church. We'll stand together and sing all three verses. 594. This evening, I'm going to ask Brother John McGurk to open our service in prayer right after he prays. Welcome one another to the service this evening, Brother John. Father, thank you, Lord, that we can be here tonight to hear about Jesus. Father, thank you for the morning service, Lord. Yes. So possibly being here, heard Christ for the first time. Father, I pray for those folk that heard the gospel, Lord, that they either return this next Sunday. Yes. Father, I pray you bless our service this evening. May everything turn. another this evening.
Amen. Amen. Good fellowship. Good family time. All righty. 588 as we continue this evening. 588 with our offertory hymn. We remain seated for sing the first and the third of On Jordan Stormy Banks. Amen. Thank you. 503 as we continue singing this evening. 503. Singing I go. When we stand together, we'll sing all four verses. 503.
Amen. I like that hymn. For Jesus has lifted my load. Praise the Lord for a wonderful time this morning. And thanks to all who were able to invite folks to come. Maybe your friend didn't get to come and that's okay. The main thing is that you invited them and you gave them that opportunity. And I want you to be thinking about who you will invite next time because we'll do this again. And uh, we're already thinking maybe springtime of doing this again. Maybe we'll do it before, but uh, uh, we're planning. A, we're we're going to plan up another one. Give uh, give you another opportunity to invite friends out and uh, pray for those who came this morning and heard the gospel. Some, many, several heard it for the first time, and uh, pray the Lord would use it in their hearts. Pray that that seed planted would uh, be watered and would bear fruit. And folks would come to know Christ as Savior. Uh, so pray for fruit from uh, the gospel and the service this morning. But we praise the Lord for the good time uh, he gave us together this morning. All right, Matthew chapter 15. And you'll see this particular account of Christ casting a demon out of the Syrophoenician's daughter. Uh, you'll see it takes, we, we find the account in two of the Gospels, Matthew chapter 15 and Mark chapter 7. Um, I'm going to be kind of going back and forth between those two accounts uh, because of the various details from each account that I want to share with you. So you might want to open to both of those chapters and we'll go back and forth between the two. But we're going to read Matthew's account and uh, beginning in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 15. Then Jesus, Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Let's pray. Father, singing we go along life's road because the Lord Jesus has lifted our load. And how thankful we are to be here tonight with joy and peace, knowing that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Knowing that we have peace with you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, knowing that we're saved unto the uttermost. Father, knowing that tonight we've been reconciled unto thee through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give, give thee praise tonight. We come with grateful hearts. But Lord, we also come with hungering hearts. Lord, we want to learn more of thee and thy word and thy son. We want to grow more because, Lord, we want to be more fruitful more usable, more useful in your work, in your service. Lord, we want to be used to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I pray you'd use your word in our hearts tonight to bring forth change, to bring forth confirmation to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll thank you in his precious name we pray. Amen. Now, You've noticed already that this particular miracle reaches over the borders of Israel to touch some Gentiles. 
And uh, we just read that. This involved, uh, this particular miracle involved the daughter of a Syrophoenician, uh, a woman who was a Gentile. She's spoken of as being of Canaan, as being a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. She is a Gentile. So let's look at this in detail tonight. First of all, we see the problem for the miracle, and the problem, once again, is demon possession. We see the corruption in the problem. In Mark's account, Mark chapter 7, verse 25, we see this unclean spirit as this demon is described. Unclean spirit. Now, that describes the devil, and it describes his emissaries. They are unclean. They're evil. They're wicked. It also gives us a picture of the work of the devil and the work of his emissaries. Um, it's a dirty work. It's an unclean work. It's an evil, a vile work. And by the way, that is the problem in our land today. Our problem today is not an economic problem. Our problem today is a corruption problem because society, just like this young girl in our text, is under the influence of evil. John chapter 8 and verse 44, Christ said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. That's why society is the way it is today. So we see the corruption in the problem. Then we see the child in the problem. She is described in Mark chapter 7 verse 25 as a young daughter, a young daughter, uh, the young daughter of this Syrophoenician woman. Now that reminded me, first of all, sin knows no boundaries, right? Sin doesn't care. It knows no boundary. In fact, that's the strategy of sin. It's the strategy of the devil. It's the strategy of his emissaries. It is the strategy of evil to influence our youth, to influence them while they are young. Now, the reason most parents have trouble with their kids when they become teenagers is because they've already lost them. You see, the strategy of evil is to influence our kids at a very young age. And we see that portrayed for us in this particular account. Now, what's the answer? Well, I'll tell you, just from what we've read already, the answer was Christ coming on the scene, right? The answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what's sad to me, folks? Honestly, we go home sometimes by a certain way. We go by the uh, uh, sports complex near our house, and uh, we don't go that way anymore. You know why? You can't get out. You can't get through that road. Uh, there's so many people out there on Sunday playing all kinds of sports and and whatnot that uh, you, you can't even get down the street. And, and most parents are more interested in little league and dance lessons than they are spiritual training for their children. But I tell you about this Syrophoenician woman. Say what you will about her. She recognized the greatest need for her daughter was the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to recognize as parents. So the child in the problem, then we see the cruelty of the problem. In Matthew chapter 15, the end of verse 22, it says, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now folks, again, that's what the devil does when he gets his hooks in someone. This describes for us the ravishing effects of sin right here. Grievously vexed with a devil. That's sin. It slowly but surely and wholly takes full control and wreaks havoc upon its victim's life. It brings grief and vexation. So you see this problem here? It's being described. It's a dire problem. It's a, it's a terrible, it's a dreadful problem. But you know what? It only magnifies 
the glorious divine power of Jesus Christ and his ability to deliver one from sin. And what a beautiful picture it is. Christ is the answer. He's the answer. He's the solution to our most serious problem. So we see the problem for the miracle. Then we see the pleading for the miracle. Here's this mother and her daughter, her young daughter is possessed by a demon. And here she is pleading with Christ concerning her daughter. And really, it gives us some good instruction in praying. It really gives us some good instruction in praying how to seek the Lord. First of all, she pleaded wisely. Notice in verse 22 of Matthew 15, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Now that's the way to seek the Lord, isn't it? That's the way. And First of all, I want you to see the man sought in her pleading. Notice who she sought out. She cried unto the Lord. Very wisely, this lady went to the right source. In fact, she went to the only source for help. It's, it's interesting, mankind, and sad to say, even many Christians go to the wrong source for help. They go to the world for help. Every other source other than God. But I want to tell you the very best help, and many times the only help, is divine help. It is help from the Lord. And by the way, <laughs> to get that help, you don't have to stand in long lines. You don't have to fill out forms. You don't have to pay a bunch of money. You can go to him any time from any place. The man sought in her pleading. Now I want you to see the mercy sought. In her pleading. Did you notice how she approached the Lord? Very wisely, based on mercy, not merit. And that is the way you get an answer. <laughs> You'll get much more pleading from a basis of mercy than you ever ever will pleading from a basis of merit. By the way, if if getting an answer to our prayers depended on our merit how would you feel about that i wouldn't feel too good <laughs> i don't think we'd we'd get many prayers answered because isaiah 64 verse 6 says the best we have is just a filthy rag but this lady was wise listen mercy is a wide open door limited only by the riches of god's grace just think about it. Mercy is a wide open door limited only by the riches of God's grace. And praise the Lord for that. So she pleaded wisely and then she pleaded believingly. Mark chapter 7 verse 26 says she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter and Matthew 15, 28 says, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. I want to tell you about her. She came to Christ believing that he could help her. Believing. Now, when she came to Christ, if you notice, she didn't say, Lord, if you can, if you have the power to do it. it. It was not a matter of his power. It was simply a matter of his willingness. And she very wisely recognized that. She knew he could do it if he was willing to do it. She believed. She believed. I've told you this. There's no telling how many times I've told you this. It's simple. But it's so powerfully, profoundly true. Faith honors God and God honors faith. That's it. And you see it right here. Faith 
honors God. And God honors faith. And by the way, it's really a lack of faith sometimes that keeps us from coming to God. And that's why sometimes we go to, to other sources for help. Because we really don't believe that, that God can do it or we don't believe he's willing to do it. And so we seek out help from other sources. But boy, when you see the ple pleading of this mother, I'm telling you, it is a clear evidence of her faith. She believed. She believed, so she, she pleaded wisely, and she pleaded believingly, and she pleaded promptly, promptly. Mark chapter 7, verse 25 says, For a certain woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Now, what that means is as soon as she heard that Christ was in the area, she ran to him because the word came means to come immediately. That's what it means in, in the Greek. It means to come immediately. And so as soon as she heard Christ had come to her town, to her area, she made a beeline and she went right to the Lord Jesus Christ. She was prompt in regards to her opportunity. Folks, so many times when opportunity comes our way when it passes by it passes by swiftly and if we're not prompt in seizing that opportunity we'll miss it but I want to tell you she came immediately she acted quickly urgently passionately as you'll see in a moment diligently and it's a good thing she did she may have forever lost her opportunity to see her daughter delivered now, folks, there ought to be a, a holy urgency about some things in our lives. Maybe some folks we know, maybe folks that, that were here this morning that, uh, that, that need to be saved. Uh, maybe some children who, whose lives are, need to be changed or going the uh, wrong direction. But we need to have some holy urgency about some things, and we need to seize the opportunities. Be prompt in your stewardship of spiritual opportunity, and you'll have abundance of spiritual blessing, okay? Be prompt in your stewardship of spiritual opportunity, and you'll have an abundance of spiritual blessings. Then, you see, she pleaded earnestly. I mean, you can't read this without it shouting to you earnestness and uh, urgency, that's what you see when you read this. By the way, that's the only way to come for God. Come to God for help. That's the only way. If we're not urgent, if we're not earnest, how can we expect God to be urgent and earnest in answering our plea? This is the only way to come. This lady teaches us how to come earnestly and urgently before the Lord. James 5, 16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I see in this her courage. It's interesting It Mark's account in verses 24 and 25 says this, And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid for a certain woman. Boy, she was urgent and earnest. <laughs> he couldn't hide. You know why he couldn't hide? For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean, unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Now, at this point in the account, Christ was in a house. I'm telling you, she came right on in. She just came right on in, seeking Christ and fell at his feet. Folks, I honestly believe if the door would have been locked, she would have knocked it down. I mean, when you read this and get the feel for this passage, this lady would not be denied. I'm telling you. She was both confident and conspicuous in seeking help from Christ. She was not ashamed. She didn't care who knew it. 
Uh, she was conspicuous about her faith in Christ and her confidence in Christ. And she showed it in a very plain, open, obvious, conspicuous way. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That word boldly means with confidence, without fear, without doubt. That's the way she came. Let us therefore come boldly, without fear, without doubt, with confidence unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So you see her courage and then you see her crying in Matthew 15 and verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him. And that word cried when you study it, it it's a very strong word in the Greek language and it means to be loudly insistent. Now, the lady wasn't belligerent, don't get the wrong idea, but she was earnest, and she was serious, and she was passionate about seeking help from the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole thing shouts earnestness. <laughs> That's what I see when I read this and study. She was earnest in seeking help from Jesus Christ. And then she pleaded humbly. You won't get much unless you do. She pleaded humbly, and she demonstrated humility in several ways. First of all, if you notice, when she came to Christ for help, Mark chapter 7, verse 25 says she fell at his feet. She fell at his feet in humility. Second, Matthew 15, verses 22 and 24 said she called him Lord. Lord, that is, she put herself before him as servant and he's master and he's Lord and then third when Christ equated her in the category of dogs you read that in Mark 7 verse 27 and by the way that's what the Jews called the Gentiles you know what she didn't take offense she didn't protest she didn't scream or holler um, she just humbly accepted that and she just kept on pleading for help <laughs> She never missed a beat. She just continued to plead for help. Humility must cover us when we come to God for help. Mark it down. Humility must cover us when we come to God for help. Arrogance will get you nowhere. Pride, the scripture is clear, will push you away from the Lord. Humility will draw you nigh unto the Lord. And by the way, this is what I'm saying right now is a very foreign concept to the world. The world's all about self-aggrandizement, self-promotion, self-confidence, self-everything. And we've got to be careful we don't get caught up in that same attitude. But when you study this account, there was absolutely nothing in this woman's conduct that said pride or arrogance in any way she walked humbly before him and then she pleaded persistently persistently mark chapter 7 verse 26 says she besought him besought is written in the imperfect tense in the greek language which means she just continued to beseech him. She begged him. She besought him over and over again. And this teaches us about perseverance in prayer. She just continued to plead with the Lord, despite, as we're going to see, um, things that could have been very discouraging to her, some rebuffs, if you will. She just continued to plead with the Lord. Most people would have quit. <laughs> This woman refused to faint. So let's note three of the rebuffs she faced. And again, these things really highlight her persistency. Uh, first of all, deafness to her plea. Matthew 15, 23 says, But he answered her, not a word. When the woman first approached Christ about the need, he basically turned a deaf ear. To her. Now, folks, don't get the wrong idea. 
We're going to learn something here. Christ was testing her faith. He was, te he was checking her faith, testing it to see how sincere she really was. So he didn't answer. You know what she found out? Here's what she learned. And I've told you this many times as well. God's delays are not God's denials. God's delays are not God's denials. And she found that out. And by the way, this account ought to encourage us when we pray and maybe we don't see our prayer answered immediately. We need to be reminded of this and this should encourage us. Sometimes the Lord is testing our faith to strengthen our faith and to improve our faith. And that's what the Lord was doing here. Delay checked her sincerity and forced her to be more fervent. Even more fervent. Delay is a test. It's not a denial. But it is a test. And sometimes it reveals a lack of sincerity. Sometimes it reveals a lack of faith in our lives because we give up so quickly. And so deafness to her plea. And then we see discouragement from the disciples. Again, we're looking at some things that could have just caused her to say, well, I guess... Yes, this is not going to work. Discouragement from the disciples? Well, notice in Matthew 15, verse 23b, And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. She's bothering us. <laughs> um, how should we put this? This wasn't the best performance by the disciples. <laughs> I mean, uh, they were very selfish here. You and I have never been selfish. But they were very selfish and very unspiritual. They did not want to be bothered by the needs of this person. Have you ever been there? No, well, I have. And I'm not proud of that, but at times we, I think probably, well, I won't say most of us or all of us, some of us have been there, okay? <laughs> and here they are, you know what they say? She's a bother. Lord, would you just get rid of her? Just run her off. She's bothering us. Now, do you think the woman heard that, saw that? perceive that, witness that. Absolutely she did. And what a discouragement that could have been to her. Here's the followers of Christ. The ones who go to Chad's Ford Baptist Church, Lord. <laughs> Here they are and uh, they say I'm a bother. They, they say get rid of me. And surely that would have been a discouragement. They just don't seem to care. <laughs> but boy, she didn't give up, did she? She didn't give up. And neither should you because of the attitudes of others. Sometimes people will, uh, they'll be naysayers. They'll be wet blankets, we call them sometimes. But don't let them quench your zeal for the Lord. And then... Here's the third rebuff, the deficiency in her opportunities. Matthew chapter 15, let's begin reading in verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to the Jews. She was a Gentile. Now, look at her response. She got mad, she was offended, and she ran away. Then came she and worshipped him. That's amazing. Saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread, the, G the bread for the Jews, and cast it to the dogs, to the Gentiles. And she said, Truth, Lord, truth. 
Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Don't you love her? Well, I, I tell you, I just, I just love this lady. <laughs> I mean, these statements gave priority to the Jews. That's what the scripture says. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 says, To the Jew first. I'm telling you, it's like this lady knew the rest of that verse. And also to the Greeks. I mean, it's, it's like she knew that. And there's so much we can learn from this. But I tell you, when I was studying this, this is the thought that came to my mind. The ground is level at Calvary. And it just seemed like she knew that. Despite everything, it just seemed like she knew that. And the principle taught in Galatians 3 and verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Christ was testing her, and she passed with flying colors. I mean, she passed with flying colors. She was not offended. She did not protest. She acknowledged her unworthiness, and she pleaded for compassion. Lord, help me. Help me. Just, just give me the crumbs that fall from the master's table. That'll work every time. I'm telling you, it touched the Lord's heart. And then we see she pleaded honorably. Her entire prayer was honorable. She honored the Son of God. Did you notice we read in Matthew 15, 22, she addressed him, Thou Son of David. Do you know what she was saying? You're the Messiah. I know who you are. You are the son of David. You're the promised one that would come from the line of David, from the lineage of David, that would come and assume and take and rule from the throne of David. I know who you are. You're the Messiah. You're the promised one. You're the sent one. You're the Savior. <laughs> she honored the Son of God. Now listen. Honor Jesus Christ and God will surely honor you. There is no question about that. Honor Jesus Christ and God the Father will surely honor you. Let me just give you one verse, John 14 and verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me Christ is speaking. He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. <laughs> that is a great verse. She honored the Son of God, and she honored the Word of God. Notice verse 26, Matthew chapter 15. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth. Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She acknowledged the word of God is true. Yes, it is true. What you have said about the, the Jews' privileges, it's true. And it's true what you've said about my lowliness. <laughs> and she said, the word is true. By the way, it's easy to agree with the word when the word is giving you promises and speaking nicely and wonderfully about blessing and promises and privileges. But boy, when, it's, when the word of God is, is speaking against us, as it was speaking against her here, then it's much more of a challenge to say, true, right? True, yeah, that's me, that's, that's true. But you see, our attitude toward the word of God reveals our faith. And this revealed this woman's faith here when, when even what was said was against her, she said, truth, you're right. You're exactly right. Right, true faith will always honor the word of God, always. Truth 
truth, Lord. Last main point, the performing of the miracle. (laughs) She wouldn't give up, and she got her request, didn't she? She pleaded successfully because the Lord Jesus Christ cast that demon out of her daughter. Notice the cause of of the performing. Why did Jesus Christ do it? What caused him to do it? Well, notice verse 28, Matthew 15. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Faith was the reason he did it. Faith was the cause for the performing of the miracle. It was the cause for why Jesus Christ cast that demon out. By the way, over and over again we've seen this, have we not? Time and time again, Our Lord Jesus has responded to what? To faith. To faith because faith always honors God and God always honors faith. Go with me quickly to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. And this is very familiar. But here's the cause of the performing of the miracle. Here's why Jesus did it. Now faith, verse 1, chapter 11, faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Look at verse 4. By faith, Abel. Look at verse 5. By faith, Enoch. Look at verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Look at verse 7. By faith, Noah. Look at verse 8. By faith, Abraham. Verse 9. By faith, he sojourned. Look at verse 11. Through faith also Sarah. (laughs) You get the idea. Now we're not going to add to the word of God, of course, but I wrote this down. By faith, the Syrophoenician woman saw her daughter who was grievously vexed by a demon gloriously delivered. That's why Christ did it. By faith. Faith, as the old hymn puts it, faith is the victory, amen? Faith is the victory. One more word about this before we leave it here. There is a message here for every parent, for every parent. The best parents are those who have faith, the ones who have faith. Look at the difference it made in this mother's daughter's life. You may not be able to give your children a lot of the things of this world, but I'll tell you, if you can live out a real faith before them, if you can show them a real faith, and you can see them adopt that faith and come to know Christ as Savior, and then by faith serve Jesus Christ, that's the greatest gift on this earth that's the greatest blessing on the face of this earth if you can see them have eternal life and by faith live out the abundant life you have given them the greatest blessing on the face of this earth without faith this precious little girl would have never been delivered she would never have been Delivered from being grievously vexed by this unclean spirit. Provide faith for your home and you will have given your home the greatest provision ever. Faith by faith. The cause of the performing, notice the command in the performing. The second half of verse 28 of Matthew 15. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt, and her daughter was made whole. What a beautiful picture of salvation. 
was made whole from that very hour. Over in Mark chapter 7 verses 29 and 30, you'll see the words gone out. That, that unclean spirit was gone out of her. That's interesting because that's written in the perfect tense, that which means gone out once and for all forever. See, salvation is forever. It's once and for all forever. It's permanent. And this is a beautiful picture of our salvation. And then we see the compliment in the performing in verse 28. O woman, great is thy faith. I'll tell you, evidently she had a lot of disadvantages in life, but she pleased God. And that's what counts. She pleased God. And by the way, if you, listen, if you want the smile of God upon your life, you've discovered the key. Here it is right here. O woman, great is thy faith. If you want the smile of God, that's how you have it. There's the key. And then lastly, the confirmation of the performing, the confirmation of the miracle that Christ performed. Mark chapter 7 and verse 30, and this is beautiful. And when she was come to her house, the woman, the Syrophoenician woman, went back home. She found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. When God does a work, the evidence is clear. The evidence is real. This, this Syrophoenician woman comes home and everything's different. Now everything is changed. When she left the house, her daughter was tossed and thrown about and grievously vexed and tormented. She comes back and her daughter is lying peacefully, resting on the bed. Everything is different now. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to study it together again, Lord. Thank you that we could gather. Thank you for my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. What a joy it is to come together, to fellowship one with another. Lord, to pray together, to sing together, to worship together. Lord, to serve together, to study your word together. And Lord, I pray that each one of us would be strengthened. And Lord, I pray that each one would be encouraged to go out now into the highways and byways. Lord, to go out after, after what we've witnessed this morning, Lord, with folks who were willing to come because, uh, Lord, they know that in their hearts they need something. Uh, Lord, I pray it encourage us to invite others, to speak to others, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others this week, to look for opportunities to, to seek them out, Lord. Father, we want to be used. We want to bear fruit that we might, as this woman did, please thee and bring a smile to thy face. And we thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing 180. 180. This lady found out about the mercies of the Lord. And if you're saved tonight, you know about those same mercies. Let's stand together and sing this through.
together in his house today. Brother George Cleves, would you dismiss us in prayer this evening, sir?